and very happy to be with uh, all of you. And uh, this is something that I have done in the past. So I'm just reusing the presentation here because, uh, I mean, if uh, recording is sent, probably you can go through it and then allow you to have some questions answered. So as Sahib Sahib was saying, we will have some opportunity at the end to have some questions and I'll try and answer as much as possible. Uh, so the first thing is, why is it that uh, this topic came up and uh, this title? Primarily because I was talking to somebody at uh, IIT Madras and this person says, we have seen that uh, the freshers or probably in an early employment stage, people simply copy paste the resume of their friends or, uh, or uh, classmates. I, in fact, the objective also is something which is pretty similar to each other, right? So that is where we thought, okay, why don't we create something and educate in terms of uh, what is important in resume? And I understand uh, from the audience, uh, Saif Saab has shared uh, some information. Larger population is, uh, or the larger participants are somebody in the experience range of one to two. And I think for them, this will be a lot more beneficial than somebody who, who already has 10 plus year, years of experience because 10 plus years, probably chances are that you might have moved between roles. In, at a particular time in your career, it is not the resume that gets you the job, but it's your relationship and the network that you have established, right? So with that little context, uh, I have put together this for something else. As I said, we are reusing it. And I know I don't believe in uh, just a lecture uh, because uh, a lot of us are different learners. Some of as our audio, some of us are audio visual. And I don't know, probably I can, I'll also share this uh, presentation, uh, this session with the organizers and they can make a copy to, uh, so that you can have it for future references. Now, I don't know how many of you have observed that these two extra uh, on both E's in a resume. And just for a little information, uh, if somebody uh, in the participants have, uh, studied friends, they know that these are called accents. Now, I get a lot of questions. Do I write resume or biodata or CV on top of my uh, one page or two page? I mean, I think it doesn't matter because in some countries it is used differently, but if you put any of these, it's absolutely fine. From a flow of the lecture perspective, I kept it very simple. I was going to expand word letter of the word resume might mean because we process a lot of information and sometimes we need acronyms or shorter forms so i thought what is the best way to remember so why don't we just expand what r-e-s-u-m-e -E means right so but before we get into that certain basics because having been in the corporate world for almost two decades now and have uh, done a lot of interviews, uh, have also given interviews, but mostly it has been on the other side of interviewing somebody. And I have realized there is some gap. Probably people who are in HR might know it. Somebody who has been in recruitment definitely knows it, but for somebody else, it might be a challenge. So I thought, Let's start with certain basics on why exactly and where resume comes into picture, right? So first and foremost, there has to be a job requirement. Now, for people who have experience, probably they know that somebody has resigned or a new contract has come into the organization because of which there is demand. So this is nothing but there has to be a demand for somebody in the organization. Now that can be at an entry level, mid level, senior level, but the company should be in a position to absorb cost. Anybody who is coming to an organization is a cost to the company, right? So there has to be a job requirement first. Based on that job requirement, there is something called a job description that will be written. So if I am in recruitment and the business guy from the delivery end, if they want somebody, 
they will share a job description with me saying that okay we are looking for somebody who comes with these 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 set of things because as a recruiter i can't just go and hire somebody i need something to relate to right so that is where the job description comes into picture basis the job description the recruiter will give it to the sourcing team now the sourcing will happen in multiple ways now sourcing can happen through a walk in sourcing can happen through the knock knockery or linkedin sourcing can happen through a consultancy sourcing can happen through a job fair so there are different ways sourcing happens then after the sourcing it is the screen so now you got multiple resumes and you have a resume resume bank whatever then you have to sort or you have to screen and weed out the ones which are not relevant so this session is all about how are you going to make your resume relevant for that job then the profile evaluation so somebody will screen it and will give it to the business back saying that okay we received 1000 applications out of which your requirement is 10 now here are the 100 resumes with that we feel matches closely to what you have provided and they will evaluate probably they'll give it to somebody else within the team who will look at it or they will do a level 1 interview or level 2 interview that kind of stuff right then it gets passed on to different sets it can also mean an hr interview an interview is a different ball game altogether probably in future we might have a session around it and then the selection happens now selection happens so this is an acronym which i created for easy reference because we are living in the world of covid and everybody is wearing a mask so in an interview also when you go the interviewer is actually trying to see what is there behind the mask all of us wear a mask not the physical mask but the actual uh, mask so they want to see what is your motivation to join they want to see what is the attitude that you carry what are the skill set that you have and the knowledge that you possess right as i said it's a completely different session we will try and see if we can do it okay so this is how the cycle happens from the demand to fulfillment okay now we said we will expand each letter of the word resume the r is relevant information now i just want to call out that this session might look like more like a uh, instructions because as i said i don't believe in uh, just uh, giving you some uh, tips and leave it there but it is going to be a deep dive into each segment of your resume and some uh, uh, tips or uh, some techniques or from my experience i have seen some of the good candidates gets weed out because the information doesn't come out very well in their resume so what do we mean by relevant information please understand that irrespective of a physical copy of a resume or through linkedin or virtual whatever if there is one job opening there will be 100 200 300 maybe it can be 1000 application also that the recruitment team will get so put yourself in their position and see how easy it is for them to actually pick you if you have applied for that position what are your chances of getting picked very very rare right so i say that certain things will that you need to pay attention to i will expand each one of them and i am probably uh, also share some personal experiences that i have seen okay from personal details point of view your name as on certificates the reason why i say this is sometimes what happens whatever you mention in your resume that gets captured and the organization will create the credentials and your display name everything as per that now if you look at my name it is sheikh sajjad ahmed and when i was in school i don't know why i used to use s.k. sajjad ahmed and the first company that i worked for general electric all my records have sk sajjad ahmed whereas in every other organization is it is just sajjad ahmed right so just be careful when you put your name try as much as possible to put it in either your passport or aadhar card whatever is considered for uh, joining an organization contactable phone number 
I mean, I can't tell you how uh, frustrating it was when we found a resume which uh, fits the requirement, but the number mentioned there is a number that we can't reach the person on. I have a story around it as well. One of my friends who wanted to come back to India from mid Middle East sent me uh, his profile saying that, hey, I found this opening in your company. Can you please refer? And he missed out one digit from his phone number. And all this while the conversation between the recruiter and him was happening over an email. But at the time of patching the call with the client, the recruiter was unable to get in touch because the number was not correct. So he missed out on that opportunity. Might look very silly, might look very small, but it is important. Correct email. Obviously, if you mention something and just in case if the recruiter is trying to contact you through an email and if it bounces back, you lose out on that opportunity. City of residence is also important because now in the COVID world, probably things are a little different and you can work from anywhere. But some of the accounts, some of the clients will be very specific and say that no. I mean, from our experience, we have realized Hyderabad for instance, is a place where you will find a lot of talent for our requirement. We would prefer somebody who is based of Hyderabad. Okay. Then I get a lot of questions on, okay, should I write an objective or what is the difference between an objective or a synopsis? I mean, frankly speaking, I don't think so. Anybody goes into detail about what is written there. I'm telling you, I get a resume and I have seen people actually don't look at an objective because earlier days objective was something that you put in to show your motivation, right? But what people generally tend to do is, okay, where have you worked and what are some of the other things? Because a job description doesn't talk about what would be the objective of an employee or a potential employee, right? I would say, no too much about your objective if you want to keep it you can just keep it from an education name of the college that you have finished because i will tell you about this point in probably in the last slide of uh, this presentation why it is important to mention the name of college okay city where the where you have studied because if you look at nalanda i'm sure nalanda is in a different uh, places so please mention that year of passing is important and percentage of marks. Now for experienced people, it doesn't matter whether you were, you passed in third division or with distinction, it doesn't matter as long as you have the experience. But for a fresher, probably if it is off campus recruitment, then it matters because in at campus, obviously the college authorities will not send somebody who has backlogs or certain uh, is not met from an organization if you have uh, if you are an experienced person name of the organization where it is located your start and end date because please understand that when you join an organization the first year just goes by in trying to understand the organization second year goes by your contribution and third year is when actually if you apply certain statistical ways or whatever you are return of investment of the company will start coming in at a later point in time. So if you have a history of employment with just one more year, then it kind of gives a signal to the interviewer that stability is an issue. Maybe you have genuine reasons, right? But that's how uh, human beings will process. Then uh, your job title. So there is a difference between job title and the designation. So let's say the job requirement is for a project manager. And you are working in some organization as a project manager. However, your designation in that company is just a manager. So if you put manager, then the requirement is for a project manager. You are playing a role of a project manager, but you're putting or you're paying a lot of emphasis on the designation. So the keyword match will not happen to what you have mentioned to what the requirement is. So always mention both. 
the designation and then the role. Responsibilities, I will show you in subsequent slide a little example of that. And if there are any projects that you have done or some achievements. Now, a lot of youngsters, a lot of fresh graduates ask this question. I don't have any experience. What should I write in my resume? But I'm sure there were some projects that you have done in your college. You can expand that a bit. If you have done some internship, you can talk about that. So if you have that experience, why don't you put it there instead of ignoring that part? Then skills. Now these days you have very smart resumes. I, I come across some resumes with a lot of uh, graph. It looks like somebody is applying for, if somebody is applying for an IT job, uh, the resume comes as if uh, the person is applying for some creative director kind of a job, right? But try and maintain what primary skills you have and what secondary skills and if there are some core competencies that you bring to the table. But all of this is applicable for somebody who has a lot of experience. For freshers, probably it doesn't matter that much. Then training and certification is important. If there are some courses that you have taken, I get some questions like, okay, I have taken a course on Coursera. Should I mention it? If it is relevant to the job that you are applying for, absolutely you can mention that. Certifications play a good role. And let me tell you, certifications also decide your uh, salary because when uh, recruiters kind of try and zero on somebody, they have two candidates, one without certification, one with certification. Chances of the certif uh, certified person getting a higher salary are high. So basically, when you write all of this, ensure that it is maximum two pages, one or two pages, that's it. No exam philosophy, more number of pages, you will get more marks, doesn't work in a resume. People don't have time. And I can tell you, just observe, if you are working in an organization or if you yourself are in that position of taking interviews, when you get a resume, how much time do you actually spend on that resume? And if you have like six pages, do you have the patience to read all six pages? I doubt. So try and keep it to a one page or maximum two page. Because your resume, as Saifsa was saying, is an option to get attracted, not to get the job. Because in order to get the job, there are other things which come at play. But this is a medium for you to get attracted to the recruiter, right? So these are some of the relevant information that you have to put. Now people say, my hobbies and all, actually doesn't matter because organizations uh, uh, really don't look at, okay, who's somebody who likes to travel and we will take only this person. Huh, maybe if you are applying for a tourism related stuff and if you write hobbies as a okay, traveling around, Probably that's a good kind of a match, but you're applying for an IT company for say, and you write that I like watching movies. It has no relevance to uh, what uh, the job is demanding you to, right? Okay, now moving on. Second E is it has to be easy to read. Now I've tried to give you an example. Look at these two pictures, both are my pictures. And I have seen some people put a picture and I just can't figure out who this person is. And some of the questions I get it, do I even include a picture? So I would say, given the COVID world now, there is a lot of impersonation that is happening. Somebody else is taking an interview and somebody else is uh, joining the organization. So I'm sure the organizations are asking for a picture. So when you put a picture, please ensure that it is readable and somebody can figure out who exactly you are, right? And the font. Now, it, it doesn't have to be flowery. You know, it has to be readable. So as you can clearly see, somebody can mistake my name and instead of Sajjar, they might read it as Gajar, right? So ensure that the font is very clear. So an education, I've just given an example at the spelling of a bachelor. Now, probably it is very, very minute. 
but i have seen a lot of recruiters just putting the resume aside because there are uh, spelling mistakes or grammatical errors on a resume then there, there is something which needs to come out just highlight that or make it in bold oops sorry ah. and when you write your experience just go in an order if you see on the left hand side it talks about my first organization and my most recent is there and then something in between and if you look at how a recruiter will read your resume they will go from top to bottom they will not come from the last page to the first page so it has to be the most recent one that you're doing then followed by the previous organization and you go in that order okay so it has to be easy to read and have someone proofread your resume before you actually send it believe me it works because there are times where probably you have not been able to identify what is missing the other person will be able to tell you because you are the one who created it you focus too much on it and chances are that you will miss but somebody else comes with a fresh pair of eyes and they will be able to tell you that aha uh -huh, this is where you have made a mistake or you can change it so they'll give you a new perspective so always have it proofread by somebody else this is specific details now there is a difference between contribution and description and this we have often seen uh, even in uh, promotion recommendation i'm i'm just moving away from the topic of uh, resume to promotions even for a promotion somebody has to nominate or you have to self nominate and when you start writing a lot of people write about uh, the description but not the contribution so in your resume also if you are talking about your achievements then it should not talk about the description but what exactly you have achieved how did you contribute to the organization so here is an example that i have given let's say your college authorities are requesting you to change the venue of a college fest okay this was a scenario that has happened now candidate a is writing something like this took part worked well ensured it was successful now tell them tell me anything about what this uh, person have done whereas there is a candidate b and see how the same thing this person has written now the keyword here is voluntary nobody asked this person voluntarily executed that and it's being very specific within 24 hours the person quit and also trying to show certain behavior arrived early and what is the area that the person owned and talking about certain things here like skills supervised and all that so obviously your resume will not have just the headings right somewhere you have to expand it also sometimes you have to type write uh, bullets too so when you write those bullets ensure that it is forming a nicer story so when i say story don't uh, start creating a story but whatever is there just put it in a way where the person reading should not come back to you for clarification because i think you understand if it is an interview the person can clarify that based on what you have written in the resume but it is just a copy that is going to that person they don't have to come back and nobody will come back for one or two uh, clarifications that you have mentioned in your resume right so specific details have to be there in your resume as we have already touched upon it your resume is actually a medium for you to first advertise so if you look at any product product doesn't come into the market first they advertise they bring in that awareness and then people start buying 
right? So just like that, if the company has to onboard you, your resume needs to be that strong that the company feels that, okay, we should give an opportunity to this person too, for an interview at least. Now coming to you, it's the keywords. Now, I'm not sure how many of you heard about uh, the application tracking system. Given the digital world that we live in and a lot of people are available in the market, I just hope that things are changing now. But when we started uh, this whole work from home and digitization and all, uh, some of some people lost their jobs and uh, organization were also worried as to what's going to happen and all at least in the it uh, sector things are pretty okay because we have been able to manage and now i see that the market has picked up but there was a time where everybody was putting uh, open for hiring open to work and now i see a lot of put, people putting hashtag hiring on the linkedin profile which is a good sign but imagine a situation where chance that the jobs are very few and the applicants are pretty uh, in large numbers the companies will not invest in having a lot of people to screen the resumes so most of the organizations have gone to this application tracking system it's nothing but a software written on algorithm which kinds of gives certain uh, ratings so what are they we will see it here so there is something called a match rate, hit ratio, ranking. So match rate is, let's say your job description says, okay, we are looking for somebody who has at least an MBA. Or if it says master of business administration. And in your resume, you have only mentioned MBA. And that keyword is not fed into this ATS. So there won't be a match. So if you want to mention that you are an MBA, I would say expand it. There is no harm. Don't think that, okay, it is understood in the market. Everybody knows what an MBA stands for. But just in case, if the ATS is not fed in that fashion, then you will not get that matching result. So ensure you look at the job description properly because most often what is fed into this ATS is the job description. Okay. The hit ratio. Now, this is what I was talking about. When you type the college name or the organization and the city, then the ATS will go back to the historical records and see, okay, in the past, how many candidates did we select from this college or from this organization? What is our success ratio? I mean, because if you go at a deeper level, then all of us have certain ideas about organization, right? So I have worked for American organizations and now I'm working for a French organization. So I had a brief stint with an Indian organization. And when I talk to my friends, all of us talk differently about the culture or the values of the organization and the organization. And at times we get influenced by those ideas. And our friends will tell us that, ah, oh, don't join that company. They believe in hire and fire policy. Somebody will say that, okay, the work life balance is good in this company. So there is a kind of a perception in the market. So basis that perception, people take decisions to join organizations, right? So that kind of thing is also something that ATS tracks from a historical, okay, let's say in the past, we had 50 people applying from Vipro, for an example, and out of 50, 50% uh, 50 were a convert into our employees then probably from a threshold point of view, that's a good number. But on the other hand, if we have like probably HCL technologies, again, I'm just taking example. If, you, if you're working for any of these organizations, don't feel uh, offended or take it otherwise. The percentage of uh, converts is lesser, 
then probably we can give a better hit ratio to Wipro than HCL. Then basis that candidates will be given ranking. Now you can come back and say that this is uh, utterly a uh, very weird way of looking at it because you are not even talking to me. You don't know what my skills are. You don't know what I bring to the table. Just based on my resume, you are ranking me already. Well, my friend, unfortunately, when you have only handful of uh, job openings and many resumes, then we have to use some system. So that is where you have to take control of your resume and ensure that you use the keywords which are mentioned in the resume and put it in your, uh, sorry, on the job description to your resume. And then the businesses will decide or the person who has raised that service order or a fulfillment request in different companies, different words are given for uh, demand. They get the report and say that, all right, so out of these 100, the top 10, let's uh, finalize uh, or schedule interviews for these. Top so your goal should be to reach to that position where you are in that top bracket to be called interview. So basically the format is the key here and what you mention and what I mean by mentioning is nothing but your keywords because everything is dependent on keywords. There has to be a match. Now, if you see, it's all boiling down to the matching the requirement. So this is the balance that you have to create. So if this is your resume and this is a job description, it needs to be on a proper balance. So again, going back, you need to pay focus to the job title. What is it that this role is asking for? Now, I'm not saying that you have to literally write the same stuff if your job title was different. However, if you feel that it's a closest match, you can change it. An example is in our organization in Capgemini, we don't call people project managers. We call them engagement managers. But the role they do is exactly of a project manager. So you can go ahead and absolutely freely mention project manager if the job title of the role that you are applying for is a project manager. Okay, now we also call a service delivery manager as engagement manager. But the role will be for a project manager. This guy cannot write a project manager while doing a job of a service delivery manager. So job title matching is very important. The duties, again, when the job description talks about the key responsibilities or the duties that you have to carry out, read it properly and convert your bullet point that you have written to match it. Don't please copy paste exactly how it is, but ensure that you take that flavor out of it and rewrite your bullet point. And anything that you have done, or sometimes what happens is the, org, the job description will also talk about, okay, what is going to be the value add of this particular role? If you go on LinkedIn, sometimes it says that, okay, this role will contribute on these, 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 these areas. And if you have shown that results in your previous organization, try and marry those both so that your match ratio will be higher. Education, I mean, there are certain roles which demand. For instance, if somebody wants to have a career, uh, if somebody wants to have a career in HR, right, and the person uh, is a BTEC, whereas the requirement is MBA HR, then chances are a little less. Right. So if the job description talks about that, okay, you need to be an MBHR to join HR and you have done it, ensure that you put it so that it matches. Then the skills, as we spoke about, 
you have to be very careful because they are looking for a skilled resource. They are not looking for a generic resource. So if skills are mentioned, you have those skills, please mention that in your resume. Location, as I said, we spoke about it in the previous slide as well, the first slide, because there are certain uh, clients which we call a ring fenced, ring fenced, or they will be in a certain dedicated uh, uh, delivery centers. Some of them are protected because there are a lot of uh, compliance and statutory laws which limit uh, some organizations to hire uh, people from certain power. So there can be multiple ways. So always important to mention uh, the location. The key on the bottom line here is different resumes for different positions. If you have created a resume when uh, you start, you were about to begin your career, no guarantee that it has to be the same uh, for uh, your next job. If you are in between jobs, if you're looking for jobs, Please have multiple resumes. Obviously, your personal details, your educational qualification, your employee history will not change. But what you mention in terms of skill set, because you might have multiple skills, right? It's not like you have only one skill. You might have multiple skills. So the moment you read a job description, go back to your resume and see, okay, is this going to help? If not, create a new one, keeping all other important uh, common stuff for everything, but change whatever is required. And the last bit is evaluable. Again, there is this software ATS comes into picture and some human element that comes into picture here. But what I mean by that is now here is what I'm trying to show my journey. As you can see, I have seen a lot of resumes with pictures like these. Just imagine if the logos of the organizations are not fed into the ATS. The application tracking system will not be able to read or whatever software they have put in will not be able to read the logos because the logos are not fed. Probably now the systems are so advanced that the natural language processing and the AI and ML, whatever is there and probably things are advanced, but still don't take chances instead just put the name of the organization in text so that it is readable okay then here is an example of how the resume gets saved if you are sending it over an email how have you saved your resume so here are two examples this first one doesn't tell me anything about what is this resume about for, right. Whereas here it clearly says that okay, this resume is, belongs to Sajjad Emma, then it's a HR related resume. Because from my experience, I'm telling you, when we receive a bunch of resumes, we segregate them and put them in folders. And I don't want to actually open the resume, read everything about the resume, and put it in a respective folder. I rather would like to just see the file name and you are actually helping me reduce my workload, right? So please be careful in how you are putting or how you are naming your resume. And it is always advisable to have it in the PDF format and not Word because chances are that the version that you have used to create, and especially I'm referring to uh, college uh, graduates, just in case if, you don't have the Microsoft Office. It's very rare that nobody has it now, but just in case if you have got it done for cyber cafe or outside and they were working on a different version and the organizations work on latest versions and if they are unable to open, then you miss out. Whereas when it is a PDF, nobody can make changes also, right? They have to have an editor and all and this will not happen. So always have it in PDF. And the other part is on the tables. Now, if it is within a word table, it's fine. 
But if you copy paste an image of a table, then also chances are that the system might not read it. So as much as possible, try and have it in a readable format. And please don't have a cluttered resume. Because when you try and put a lot of information, and this is again a little psychological stuff, right? Because you know that, okay, this is my chance to attract the recruiter to get a call. And I don't want to miss out. And I want to put everything in my resume. And your resume will look very cluttered. And if it is a human being, for a, for a moment, forget that there is a system that is reading your resume. If it is a human being, Generally, we like appealing things, right? I mean, why is it that Taj Mahal looks so beautiful? Because of the asymmetry stuff. So if your resume is too cluttered with too much of color and too much of highlighting everywhere, then uh, unfortunately, your resume will be put into a bin which will go for destruction and not for in the bin where you will be caught for an interview. Let me share a very nice story. I'm just looking at the time, okay? So I was reading this book to sell is human and there is a very nice story about this Tippy College for Business in US. In 2011, they were asking for applications to applicants to submit their application for a course on future business leaders. But the catch was, they said, okay, we are not interested in your resume. We don't want your application, a big form and all, but use the Twitter and send us your application. And some of you who are on Twitter, probably now the character length might have gone down, but in 2011, it was pretty less. So the winning entry was something like this. This gentleman sent globally minded, innovative and driven Tippy can sharpen. So if you can see, business leader means they need to have a global mindset, right? And it's talking about a future business leader. So future is all about innovation. And driven is self-driven, doesn't need any motivation. And Tippy can sharpen is this college which can help this person become a great future business leader. Now, just think if you were asked to put it in three sentences with only these characters, how many people will be able to come up with this? This person got the scholarship for this nice course at TB. So I'll end it by this quote from Seth Godin who said, you are not your resume, you are your work. But unfortunately for your work to be same, your resume needs to talk about your work. So that was the end, just a recap of uh, what a resume is. Now we can take question and answers. Uh, I think I'll just go to this here and I will be looking at this. If there are any questions, you can type your questions here. Or I don't know if you have an option to unmute, you can unmute and I'll be happy to Take questions. Hello, Sujad. So this is Abra Rahmad here. Uh, you give some insights on for file for a leadership level. Should it be just a one slider? Ah, so. I, I would say at a leadership level, again, uh, these days, what I have seen is people are asking for a video uh, resume as well, because they want to see how the person sounds, how the person speaks. And probably I don't know micro expression they want to read, but I have seen that for senior level, sometimes they ask for a video resume too. And I would say one pager is absolutely fine because very recently, uh, one of my friend who was applying for a senior vice president uh, position was working on a single page resume. 
So yes, for senior people, one pager is absolutely fine. Hello, hi sir. Thank you. Good afternoon. Yep. Is the single page resume is a best approach for a resume writing or an like and for experienced guys? There are a lot of experience from we have changed a lot of organization three to four. So what is the best approach for in, in current market? So as I said, one pager is uh, very much uh, acceptable or a maximum of two pages should be okay. Because I understand you might have a uh, lot of experience, but we really don't want too many bullet points against each, uh, what do you call, employment history, right? So- Yes, sir. Mention, yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, one question I would like to ask you that uh, you have said that ATS system are using in the current HR uh, system. Some of the organization, so, not every organization. Okay. So most of the organizations are uh, searching the resumes with the keywords. So we we can't elaborate all the keywords in one single page message. So how it could be possible? Why Why not? So if you look at a job description, how big is a job description? Yes, Is yes, it a one page? One page. Yeah. So when the job description itself is one page, why do we need a resume which is pretty lengthy? So that is what I'm saying. I mean, we want to mention everything we have done uh, in the past. But whereas the expectation is you just match to what is required and you are already there. Okay, I see a question here. So did that help? Sorry, I just got distracted with the question. Did that answer help? Okay. All right. So Anoop is asking how likely it's to have a client name included. Is it mandatory to have the client and customer name? Mm, very good question, Anoop. Now, I would say uh, try and avoid mentioning the client or the customer name because even when uh, we are pitching for some new clients, we just say, for instance, let's say we are talking about uh, McDonald's. If McDonald's is our client, we will say that quick service restaurant, client is quick service restaurant but not uh, McDonald's. So I would say avoid client and customer name because that kind of in a very indirect way pass on the message to the organization that you will uh, kind of not disclose uh, company related information outside. Okay, Ali Asghar is asking any font suggestion for better ATS analysis. So <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, Arial uh, is a good font, I would say, or Calibri, and 10 or maximum 12 would be okay. Because when you look at Outlook, if you have used Outlook, when you start uh, Outlook first time, when you start a new mail, just see what is the font that comes, and that should be good enough for your resume also. All right. Shima is asking, is that mandatory person, personal details? So when I say personal details, you just have, obviously the company is interested to know your name. They are interested to have uh, your phone number and email address. They don't want to know your complete home postal address. And they also don't want to know your year. And they want, don't want to know your uh, uh, whether you're a male or a female, because these days employees uh, employers want to be equal em opportunity employers, so you don't have to mention that. Your father's name is also not important. So these details you can exclude. Your name, telephone number, email ID, your LinkedIn profile, probably the city where you are from is good enough. 
Yeah, yeah hello, sir. can I ask a question? Yes, sir, you know, as you talk about the ATS, the software, you mm. come across the basic question like a, in a single page resume, you should like a, these are two partitions on the left and right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so we have that the ATS won't catch the uh, the matter on the right side or the left side, it catches only the, it starts from the left to right. Good question. So, as I said, because these days resumes are of different variety. Some people write personal details on top, somebody will write on the left and then they'll draw a line. And then in between there is something else on the extreme right, there is another column. So, it will read from top to bottom like that. I think it's absolutely fine. You can have those sections. It's just that Try even if you are putting like I'll give you an example for education. Some people will put a hat. When you go for convocation, you have that hat, right? They put that and then they uh, start writing the university or the college they have done uh, from, right? And if that uh, icon of a flag uh, of a hat is not uh, is has not gone as an input in the eight years, then. ATS will find it difficult to read the education. Maybe ATS will capture if you have mentioned bachelor or a master, then probably it will read that. Okay, this is education instead of going to that uh, icon or the picture. It might be smart enough to capture that instead. Even if you want to put a hand, just type education. I would say try as much as possible to avoid those. Uh, what do you call it? Uh, like emoticon icons. Icons. unless unless if it is a invitation to you like somebody has seen your profile on linkedin and says that okay found your profile suitable would you please send us uh, your resume at that time you can do it or for senior position when there already there are very few positions at senior level and if you are in a conversation with somebody then you can send it because there is no system involved there and it is a human who is uh, doing it and that probably looks very appealing and it should be absolutely fine. Uh, okay sir thanks sir that clears uh, everything all around thank you so i have a question um, for example if a company uh, needs cyber security experience of five years mm -hmm. but i have two years of experience in cyber security and three years experience in another other it domain so mm -hmm. can I apply for the job or how many chances are there, how much chances are there that can be selected for that position? All right, good. So while the requirement is five and you have only two, now let me tell you, and especially the area that you're talking about cybersecurity, uh, one, already there is so much of uh, demand in that area and not too many people have experience. So organizations understand that probably it's very difficult to find somebody on a technology or an area which is so new in the market itself. I mean, I don't think so. There is any uh, college that is offering bachelor in cybersecurity or a master in cybersecurity. Maybe they might have come up now, but uh, that was not the case some time back. So it's okay for you to apply because not applying is something where you will not even get an opportunity. But go ahead and apply, maybe because there is so much of demand and supply for this, it might be called. Okay, thanks. Yeah. All right, so this is after Shima. Uh, Saifullah is asking for experienced professionals, changing the career in some other field, how to mention our previous experience. Very good question. So now, if you want to get that call, you know for sure that you have changed the career in from one field to another field. Why do you think the employer will be interested to know what is what was your other field? Maybe that is a discussion at the time of an interview. They might ask, like, okay, we see that your past experience is on this. And that is our requirement. But before that, you had something else. That could be a discussion at the time of interview. But in your resume, you have to match only to what is being asked for. Now, I, I'll tell you something else from another experience. 
just because I am in HR, some of my friends feel that I am in recruitment. I am actually not in recruitment. In HR also, you have talent management, you have compensation, you have learning and development. You have a lot of departments and functions and center of excellences. But I, some of my contacts will send me the resume and say that, hey, I'm looking for a job. Can you please refer? So my response to them, and this is what I'm going to tell every one of you on this call, is sending such resumes to your known contacts will just lie in their mailbox and nothing will happen. So the best approach is for you to first see on the website of the company where your friend is working and realize, okay, this is a link that I have found. This is the posting on your website or on LinkedIn or somewhere which is still active. And here is my profile. Can you please refer? Then chances are high because the organization knows that the resume they are getting is from an employee. An employee understand the culture of the organization and probably feels that this person is best. And from a cost point of view also, company doesn't have to pay an outsider. If there is a referral bonus, it will come to the employee. You have a chance of getting onto that uh, first bracket of getting evaluated are high. So look for a role and then apply. Just don't keep on sending because it will just not move anywhere. All right. So, so title, you know, I am really not sure because uh, as I said, uh, title of the resume, I don't know. It, when you say title, I'm still struggling where are you talking about how you will save that uh, uh, resume or what you should be on the top or it is about uh, the objective. If you can clarify that, probably I'll be able to. Okay, Yusra is asking what are the type of skills we need for resume writing? So everything that we have just spoken here on this uh, call. You just have to follow that. There are no particular uh, skills that you need. And there are a lot of uh, institutes or uh, there are a lot of companies. I think LinkedIn, Nokri, all of them have some services that you can use. You can pay. They'll ask you for some amount and they will create your resume. But again, as I said, the title of this talk itself is why you should write your own resume. Because if you are going to change your career, I mean, not everybody is married to an organization, right? There are few who find different roles and they are motivated or their values and the organization values are same. So they stick around. But we have seen a lot of us move, maybe for various reasons. We want better pay or we want experience or we just want to be a part of some organization because we have certain idea about the organization. So we keep on moving. So if you are, if you don't want to be an entrepreneur, you want to be a, a employee, then you, your career you will move between different jobs. So every time you can't go back, go to a service provider and say that okay, create my resume and I'll pay for it. Right? You can develop your own skills. All you have to do is look at your resume, look at certain samples that are available, and follow whatever we have mentioned in this, and you should be good. Shabar is saying hit rate again. Okay, so hit rate is the algorithm will look at the historic data. So let's say I have deployed that ATS. Again, I'm saying not every company has deployed ATS. Now ATS can be referred as a, some other name or it can be referred as just a software. But what I'm trying to tell you is when a human being is not involved in the initial screening of your resume that is where this system comes into picture and for larger organization it is a little easier to deploy that than a smaller organization so for a smaller organization or the micro small medium enterprise the msmes that we call it maybe they might they don't have this ats or they might have outsourced it to some other function because recruitment services are also provided by some 
companies, they might deploy it. But every organization, it doesn't have. So hit ratio is, let's say in the month of January last year, I have deployed that. And I have fed some data into it already, my historic data of the employees that I have, what, uh, what is their employment history or what colleges they come from. And then a new application comes. This ATS will read the historical data and we'll see, okay, chances of this person come accepting our offer are high. So let's go ahead and interview this person. Well, let me tell you, we have seen a lot of people using the offer that we gave and take a counter offer from someone else. For instance, we have hired somebody and have given, let's say, 5 lakh as a package to this person. The person was at 3.5 lakhs in his, his or her previous company. We gave 5 lakh. The person will take that 5 lakh offer from us. Obviously, there is a time for this person to join the company. They will go and do, it's called job shopping. I think. They go and join some other organization and will say that, okay, from this company, I have 5 lakh offer. What are you going to give? And if the person comes with a lot of skill set, which are like somebody asks about cybersecurity. So cybersecurity and cloud are something that is like pretty hot in the market right now, data, that kind of stuff. Then the other company is in dire need of having this person. They'll say, okay, we'll give you six lakhs. And the person's personal condition is as such that they want money as a motivator. They'll go and join that company. Right. So this software will also read things like that. So that is what a hit ratio is. Okay, Sami is asking, should we include portfolio and GitHub account link? Yes, if uh, you feel that is it relevant to the job that you are applying for, then yeah, you can. That's absolutely fine. Okay, Mazar is asking, is there a template available for resume wherein ATS can read it uh, for screening? I would say make keep it simple. Don't make it too jazzy and too cluttered. Just think like if somebody else is reading it, that is where I said get it proofread and ask somebody else to look at your resume. They will provide you feedback. Uh, Nadeem is asking any chances in resume writing after post COVID, like as you said, about uploading photo apart from photo anything, we have to make changes. No, I don't uh, think there is anything new that has come in post COVID, but picture for sure, because as I said, you are going to only help the organization to kind of get the confidence that they are interviewing somebody which resembles to the photo in the resume. Anoop is asking, there will be a lot of skills that people are experienced with earlier that aren't proficient now, as those could be 10, 15 years back. Current job opening is asking for the same skill. Is it okay to mention that as an experience? Yes, absolutely. So wherever there, even if it is an old skill, for example, I'll, I'll tell you, somebody asked about a skill as well, right? Now, if you look at it, yes, technology is there and organizations are looking for technical people, but these days, even the softer skills are something which is, which are becoming extremely important. As simple as active listening, right? So if there is a option in your resume where you want to write about your personal traits, and if you mention something like an active listener, then you are actually showing that the current demand is technical side, yes, but soft skills are also very important. Title in terms of objective, you know, again, it can be ob objective or synopsis or a summary. It can be anything. That's absolutely fine. Nobody will give extra marks for uh, what you have mentioned there. Ah, right. Sheikh is asking, what are the positive and negatives of applying for less experience requirements than I have? Okay. <laughs> so, again, it depends on the current. Uh, personal situation that you are in. Now, if let's say you are in an industry or an area which is slowly losing its ground, for instance, uh, let me take an example of a data entry. 
Okay, so people who might have started working 15 years back probably would know that data entry at one point in time was still considered as an option to start your career if you come from a non-technical background and want to move into an IT kind of a setup. But today, if somebody wants to start a career in data entry, might be a challenge because we have passed and there are so many systems which uh, automatically does the, the data entry part, right? So if, if you are uh, in that space and you have a lot of experience, but the demand that you are applying for doesn't require that experience, but you are convinced in your mind that I want to start, uh, I don't mind starting afresh in some new space and will give my best and will learn as a part of the process, then you can do away and apply for something lesser. The other situation is your financial situation demands you to immediately start earning and you have struggled, you have not found the job, this is your experience, but you found something else and you want to take a call, you can do that. So again, it is all about personal choices. All right, so Rafiq is asking, founder of the launch, to use CV templates, but not change parts of the template. Some parts of the templates, you still read as Dr. Summer my son. Such a indicate lack of attention. Absolutely, Rafiq. Yeah, that, that's what I said, <laughs> different resumes for different position. Every new position that you're applying for, irrespective of whether that role is pretty similar to the other role that you have applied in another company, you still have to read the job description, still relook at your resume, get it proofread, and then apply it. Okay, so that too, I hope I have answered. Okay, Arne. also I would advise you to go to career section. Absolutely, yes, the career section will have some good uh, references. Yep. Uh, Nadim is asking, I know the best source where I can build single page resumes. As I said, Nadim, there are a lot of uh, service providers. I mean, frankly speaking, I myself have not updated my resume in the last 10 years. I've been with this organization for 10 years. Uh, I have not updated it, so I would not be able to tell you, but I'm sure if you search in Google, you will get tons of uh, these service providers. Okay. A. Mukherjee is asking difference between job title and designation once more. Okay, sure, no problem. So I will take an example of a project manager again. Okay, so project manager can be in a IT company. Project manager can be in a construction company as well, right? So a project manager is somebody who works on a project which has a start and an end date. And there are certain phases that a project goes through and this person has those competencies and skills to manage that part, okay? So project manager becomes your job title. But whereas a project manager can be a manager from a designation point of view, can be a senior manager or can be a director also. So there's director, senior manager, manager are designations. Whereas the role is, or the job title is project manager. So in companies, you have levels or grades, then you have designations because from a grade, now, if I tell you that, okay, I am uh, E1 in my company, it doesn't tell you anything. So that is a unified grade that we have in our organization. But if I tell you I am a director, then probably you will realize that, ah, this person is a little above the mid-management, right? But still, it doesn't tell you which area I'm working on. But then when I tell you I'm a human resource director, then you will be like, okay, this is a non-technical department this person is in, 
and belongs to human resources. Now within the human resources, again, I am in learning and development. Then it is a little clear to you like, oh, where exactly this person fits in. So that is the difference between grading, title, designation, and role. Okay, Huda is asking, where can I get a recorded session? So Huda, I don't know if this was recorded. Even if it was not recorded, you can go on YouTube, search my name. I have done a similar one for IIT Madras. It is there already on YouTube, the same slides. Venu is asking, what is the best platform to apply jobs abroad? I really don't know. I have no idea. And again, it depends. Each country has its own. Like in India, I'm sure. I, I would say LinkedIn should be a perfect one because LinkedIn is not just uh, to a particular geography. It's a global one. You, it gives you opportunities to filter down to a city level. Uh, you can use it. Okay. All right, I think I have answered all questions. Uh, interesting and very good uh, questions that are coming. And each session has different set of questions. When I do this for colleges or universities, their questions are different. And, and on this, well, I think we have an audience which is a good mix of freshers and experienced people. Okay. Now, I don't hear uh, more questions. So, Saif, Saf, I don't know. Do we wait for some more time or we are good? Uh, I think it looks good. It was a really a nice and informative session. So, do we have, uh, is there a difference in a resume for, uh, let us say, an entry level position and with some experience, a lateral position? Does, does it make a difference in the resume? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Th thanks for bringing that up. I should have uh, covered it. So my message to the students, if you are a current student or if you are just out of college and you are trying to start your corporate journey, don't worry too much about your resume. Because if you are in college, then if the organizations are coming to your college for campus hiring, some colleges will already will have a format in which you have to prepare your resume, right? So you don't have to worry too much about it. But just in case, if your college doesn't have those companies coming for campus recruitment and you have to go through off-campus recruitment, still don't compare your resume with somebody who has an experience. Because the companies who are looking at hiring freshers or people with no experience already know that you might not have a lot to mention in your resume. So not having too much on your resume, if I can use uh, the analogy meat on your resume, don't worry. It's absolutely fine. But ensure whatever you have mentioned is proper. Like we just saw that spelling mistakes or something which is so irrelevant, but you have experience on internship, mention it. If you have experience doing some projects, mention that. Or if you simply feel about certain softer skills that you have, like I just mentioned about active listening, right? So if you are somebody who is a quick learner, mention those things. And even if you are, I am telling experienced people to have a single page resume. For somebody who is yet to start, one page is absolutely okay. All right, we have one more question. Uh, competitive exams. This is a little tricky one <laughs> because uh, competitive exams, when you say, uh, I am not sure. Are you referring to the civil services? Are you referring to the bank? Uh, which competitive exams are we talking about here? But I'll, I'll, I'll still answer that. If you are referring to anything, JEE, IIT, 
Okay. So as long as it doesn't come in conflict to where you are applying for, then it should be okay. Anoop is asking, manager designation resume is six years and senior technical lead is three years. Can we still consider the candidate fit for apply for eight plus years of experience? Senior technical lead is equivalent to associate manager and have similar roles of manager. Okay, Anoop. So this is a good question. Now, uh, one thing to make note of is every organization has a way of defining the levels or the grades. Okay, to give you an example, if it is a bank, in banks, you will find somebody who has 10 years of experience working as an assistant vice president or even for that matter, a vice president. But when you come to a company like Capgemini, our vice president will usually have an experience about 25 years, 20 plus years is when they will get to that position of a vice president. Right? So companies have different ways of putting the grading or the designations. Okay. And it's not always a perfect match. Like in this case, if your resume has six years, whereas the requirement is for eight years. I think there was another question in the past where cybersecurity five years is expected, but I have only two years of experience. Take chances, it's absolutely fine. They will not look at like, okay, we need eight and we need only eight. So there is way, it's a very rare instance where somebody will find a resume which 100% matches to the requirement. Very, very rare especially in experienced uh, candidates. Okay. So maybe we can close at 12.30. We have six minutes. Uh, we can take some more questions. Okay, I think Mustafa is asking. He's mentioning minor such as workshops attended or post held at high school level at nuisance to employers or is it applied as an intern? Okay, so Mustafa, if you are applying as a fresher, then these things that you have mentioned would still be good. Then if you are an experienced person and you are applying something that has happened at a high school level. So that's an answer for that. And workshops, yes, that goes to show that at a early age in your career, you are serious about your career and you are attending some workshops and please also remember whatever you mention in your resume you are giving an opportunity for an employer or a recruiter to ask you questions on that just in case if you get called you will need to have answers against all of them because for an interviewer they would not know anything about you other than what you have mentioned in your resume so whatever you want to mention, please feel free. But as long as you have a genuine and a true story around it, don't make up answers or just to get brownie points, as we call it in the corporate world, put additional information just to beef up uh, your resume. Okay. Any more questions? Okay, Rafiq is asking entry level applicants can include their extracurricular activities on CV like NCC and uh, even cricket team captain. Yes. Yes, absolutely, Rafiq. Entry level, you can definitely put those things. Okay. I don't see any questions. So, set up, are we okay to close? I think uh, it looks good and yeah, should be okay to close if you don't have uh, any further questions. So, thanks a lot to all the participants and especially to Sajjad Sab and uh, Principal Sab of uh,
entering college amu for taking out their time and making this webinar possible for uh, all of us i think there is one more question <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> i was just saying so alicia is it it's necessary to have a global certificate for the job done uh i mean if you have a global certificate you can mention it now again that's an interesting question because i'm sure for experienced people uh, this question might come in their mind like okay i have received a certificate in my company for successful completion of something or i have uh, been a champion of something or i received a customer service uh, award and things like that so the psychological part is we want to include as much as possible to show our accomplishments and all but that will only clutter your resume so if you are applying for a customer service related company and you have received similar awards around that it makes sense to mention that but if you have if you have uh, worked in a sales kind of an environment and you are applying for a non sales related staff and you talk about the accomplishments or the certificates you have received for meeting numbers in sales then it is irrelevant to the job that you are applying okay so just keep that in mind uh, then we have nadeem was asking how can we reach you through mail if you have questions so nadeem i i have a linkedin profile and uh, you can reach me on that and i get a lot of invites on linkedin for connection but please understand i don't accept anything which doesn't have a message in it because if somebody is trying to connect with me i don't know why you want to connect with me so if you tell me your motivation to connect and if i feel that i'll be able to add value to that and that within that uh, bandwidth that i have i will be able to but if you just send a just a uh in invitation to connect i might not so but you can definitely reach out on linkedin uh sofia is asking is four or five year experience can you consider entry level uh sofia again depends on organizations for instance if let's say an organization is into a very niche category and uh, they want higher level of experience and you come with that probably they consider it but for an it company anybody with 1 to 2 years of experience is an entry level 4 and 5 is already past that entry level uh mubarak is asking why some of the candidates get rejected by seeing the resume by the employer well mubarak as i said it's very very difficult to actually screen everybody and call everybody as well so i will not deny the fact that sometimes even probably your resume is not screened because there are so many variables attached to it just imagine a situation where i am working in my company and i have resigned and for whatever purpose i can't serve that 3 months of notice period in my company and i'm willing to leave a company is unable to find somebody in the market to replace me and they released a job description or whatever on linkedin and some people applied and company is in a hurry to close it they will start immediate evaluation and recruit and interviewing and if they find somebody suitable they offer the person accept that gets closed there i just gave you one example likewise there could be multiple examples and you sitting on the other side of it might not know what is happening on this side of the world okay so don't get too worried about when you apply and i also know this frustration where sometimes somebody goes for an interview and they don't get through and the company doesn't even provide feedback now i think some of the organizations are providing feedback but a lot of organizations don't even inform the candidate whether they are through or not and they are just hanging there waiting okay when am i going to get that call so when these things happen just give the benefit of doubt to the organization that probably they are lesser on the workforce their recruitment team is leanly staffed 
So there could be multiple reasons, but don't worry too much about it, but just move on to the next potential employer. Rahat is asking, why is it necessary to mention college name? So as I said, Rahat, uh, if there is an application tracking system in place, they will look at how successful we were in hiring people from these colleges. That's about it. I'm not saying that you have to ha come from an IIM or an IIT only to uh, get the jobs. No, again, organizations have hired differently. So when we hire our freshers, we go to Sultan Ululum, we go to a Vasavi. I'm just taking example of uh, uh, colleges in uh, Hyderabad for those of you who are from other parts of uh, the country or the world. So, but we also go to IITs, we also go to IIMs, we go to symbiosis as well. So we have different levels of hiring. We call the premium hiring, we call the non-premium niche. So there are different levels that come organization to hire. All right. I think, uh, you all know now, if you still have some questions, you can reach me through LinkedIn and you just have to give me some time to come back to you because uh, I am also in a full time role. Uh, so as and when I find opportunity, I'll come back to your questions. I think that's up. We can close. Thank you once again for all of you for patiently listening. Yeah. yeah thanks a lot for your time on a weekend yeah. from your busy schedule. We are highly grateful to you. So thanks to all the audience also. Let's we'll keep on having uh, similar sessions in future. So please try to join and with your other friends and colleagues also. Okay, thanks a lot, Jazak. Thank you. Bye bye.